When you mention the word Greece, what's the first thing that pops into your mind? For me, particularly before we lived here, it's um, scorching hot weather, beaches, the sea, the kind of bleach coloured tavernas, you know, white buildings and uh, terracotta roofs. Heat. But there's another side to it and uh, on Corfu because it's where I live and we're in springtime right now and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous time of year in Corfu. So where we are right now, well I'm not going to tell you because it's a secret, but I mean, my wife, would, the wife's down there with the kids, um, she says it kind of smells like England and the reason that it smells a bit like the UK is because look at this, look at, look at, look at, look at the lush. This is not what you think of when you think of Greece. This is not blazing hot. This is, I mean, wearing a jumper, I, I, I don't know what, I don't need to wear the jumper, I'm actually quite warm. It's about 20 degrees C, so it's still quite, it's lovely. It's still a nice day, but look, we've got a midstream, rushing water, a little waterfall down here. We were trying to get the kids to the waterfall, but they can't really get to it. They're too small at the moment, but this will be a wonderful place to come back to when they're bigger. So it's the other side, particularly of Corfu. I mean, Corfu is, um, it's known as the Green Isle. You can see why. And I've mentioned it, I've alluded to it in other videos. The, um, the annual rainfall in Corfu is actually higher than the annual rainfall in London, but the difference is we get it, we tend to get it all in one big go. Some great kind of Mediterranean tropical storms, whereas in the UK, you just get month upon month of gray drizzle. I mean, it's a gorgeous day. Absolutely gorgeous but we've still got this, um, this lush, dense green foliage. So it's a wonderful place to come for a walk. So it's, a, you know, it's Easter time here. Easter is, um, it's just been Easter, Greek Easter. It's a week later than the English Easter. And it's a big event here. For, for us in the UK, it tends to be Christmas is a big event. For the Greeks, it's Easter. So um, it has been busy. It has been busy, but if you wanted to come out, spring is a great time to I mean, if you want a beach holiday in the sun where you're gonna turn up, end up looking like a lobster and uh, drinking too much ouzo, the summer's the time to come. But this is a um, fantastic time of year, Greek Easter. It's a bit later next year, I think it's in May. This is, we're in April right now, of course. Um, but it's wonderful, beautiful. Look at that, that one there. The purple one, the locals call that a Judas tree. You can Google it and find out why. I'm gonna go now and uh, find the wife and kids and we're gonna go for a little drive and look at some little houses up in a little village up in the hills up there. And it's gonna be lovely. But of course, having been up into the hills into that rather wonderful, um, it's not quite a forest, but all the greenery and the lovely, we'll have a quick stop on the way back. We're about, I don't know, about four or five miles away from where we were. We were basically, we were up here. We were up there, we were up in the, um, over there. Um, and we're on the way back now and we're in a little town called Rhoda. If you're familiar with the North East, this is quite a popular kind of tourist destination road. You can see why the beaches, they're lovely. Look at the lovely beaches. And you can see behind me, we've just started to get the first of the businesses now opening up. Last time, um, in the kind of the winter series, uh, in the beginning of sort of, uh, or end of February, beginning of March, they were starting to paint and maintain and get things ready for the season. We're now in a situation where the first bars and taverns are actually open, and we've got the first real kind of tourists here. We had to say Easter was busy, and it always eats. Um, but we've now got people staying on for the season to start. It's the end of April. It's, I mean, I'm a t-shirt, it's a bit breezy, it's mid-twenties, I guess, so it's warm enough. There are, there were, there were a couple of people in the sea. They're crazy because the sea's still cold. Um, there's a few people out there on the sun lounges, there's a few people sunbathing. I've seen a couple of people with the old um, <laughs> rosy skin uh, in, uh, in Akaravi in town around and about. So it's all, it's all starting to kick off. So springtime is beautiful, as I say. The weather, for me, it's perfect. I mean, I... I love the summertime, I love the heat, but I can't get anything done. If you're here on holiday, it's wonderful. If you're living here and, and trying to work and look after a house and a family, it can be, well, it's, I 
I mean, I, I, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain. But when it's 30 or even 40 degrees C, it's uh, it's kind of hard to get things done. This weather is perfect. Absolutely beautiful. The island is really, really starting to come alive again now. Um, we may get some rain late. And glorious sunshine for the next uh, next five or six days. So, again, I, I for me, springtime is probably my favourite time of year. Actually, even more so than summer. Love it. We will see you when you get here for your holidays. I, I was going to leave it there, but a quick addendum, a quick um, something, because it was something that was brought up on one of the uh, Corfu visitors forums. Now, if you look at the beach, this is the other other side of. I was on the. Um, was on that bridge we were looking that way but if you look here you will see actually that um, most of the beach is currently covered in seaweed dried seaweed have a look again look at that piles of it mounds and mounds and mounds of it and what it is is over the winter when we get the winter storms um, it's all blown on shore from the winds from the sea during the, uh, the nasty weather and I do like the nasty weather I do like a good old Mediterranean storm um, and it's left here until well the next few weeks really and what they'll do the next couple of weeks they come down with a fleet of JCBs and they scoop it all up um, and some of it is used as a kind of fertilizer and stuff or I'm not, I'm not sure what it is used for to be honest but some of it's used and the rest of it is um, disposed of, it's usually burnt. So by the time the real season starts in the summer, you're left with just glorious, clean, sandy beaches. Uh, I've gone too far now, but uh, over there on that beach um, where we have some of the tavernas that are already open, the beach has already been cleared and actually they take a great pride in the condition of their beaches and the, the taverna that you can't see because I've walked too far. I'd never make a great film producer, would I? Because I don't think about what I'm doing. Um, but they rake it. Every day, every morning, they'll go out with rakes and they will actually rake the sand through. And it does two things. First of all, it cleans up any rubbish that's in the sand. Any uh, any nasty, nasty people who have left things lying around they shouldn't have done. Um, and it also, it just gives a nice, nice, uh, a nice look to it, doesn't it? That freshly prepared kind of raked sand. So you, this, this um, seaweedy stuff, it will all be gone and you will be greeted by these wonderful, glorious sandy beaches. Incidentally, on the north east coast, there's more pebble beaches than sand, but there are still some good sandy beaches and there are some good secret beaches if you know where to look.